My next guest runs one of the nation's largest electric utilities, which is California-based. He's had to deal with many of the same issues Texas power companies are now facing. Pedro Pizarro is the president and CEO of Edison International, parent company of Southern California Edison. Uh, it's great to have you here, Pedro. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Great to be here. And there's nothing you can really do about Texas, right, because they have their own grid. Yeah, they, they do. Uh, they have some connections to the rest of the country, but they're thin. But I think what they're experiencing is what we're all experiencing to some extent. We're seeing the impacts of climate change and, you know, extreme weather, whether it's heat, whether it's cold, whether it's wildfires that we've had in the West. And so we're working to harden the grid across the nation. Are the price hikes over? I mean, I remember the stories, you know, up 35 percent. We saw nat gas prices the last couple of years. People were just, you know, reeling. And is that all behind us now? Well, you know, you have to watch markets, right? So we'll see what markets do. And clearly, we had distortions from lots of global events as well. But I think the key here is making sure that we continue to have a diverse set of resources over the long run. And in California, we've had a big focus on using renewables and storage to complement, you know, gas resources. At the end of the day, I think we need a balanced set of resources that will be cleaner and more efficient, but importantly for customers, reliable and affordable. Let's talk uh, wildfires, which is probably as much of a risk as geopolitical events, all the rest of it. Not just the direct hit, obviously. I think you guys still have maybe some exposures from past wildfires. There's smoke in the air over Chicago today. I mean, we in New York felt it from those fires in Canada. They seem to be more prevalent. I don't know if we're advancing at all and figuring it out how to, how to prevent and fight them. But what do we need to do in order to stop this from becoming, you know, a, a chronic problem? Well, two, two things. There's climate change adaptation. And I think the hardening that we've done of our system to deal with the wildfire risk is one example of that. There's climate change mitigation because the reality is that we are seeing these impacts. You know, now we're seeing them in Canada. We've had them in California. Australia has dealt with this for a while. And so we need to continue making progress to uh, clean up the power supply as quickly as we can in order to help do our part towards uh, 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 mitigating the impacts of climate change. But if you look at what we've done in California over the last five years, we have hardened our grid. We've redesigned the airplane while flying it. And today, an outside group that does work for insurance companies estimates that our actions, replacing bare wire with insulated wire, adding monitoring equipment, doing more tree trimming, et cetera, um, that has all reduced the risk of our infrastructure starting a catastrophic fire by 75 to 80 percent, again, wow. just in the last five years. A 75 to 80 percent reduction from things like hardening the wires, brush clearing. I mean, when will be the test? Is this summer going to be the test of whether that strategy is paying off? Well, we've already had a test. Uh, if you look at 2019, 20 and 21, those three years had, frankly, awful, uh, risky fire weather in California. Hmm. And there were fires, there were ignitions. But the reality is that we did not see any catastrophic fires in that time and with conditions that were just as bad as as in 2017 and 2018 when we did. So we're seeing this working. We're seeing that we have not had a single ignition yet on circuits that where we've changed the wire to this covered conductor or your insulated wire. We have not seen a single ignition in the ignition on those circuits yet from the causes that that wire was meant to mitigate. Wow. So this is working and we have more work to do. Got to tell the insurance companies. I mean, if you're right, maybe I'd feel a little bit more comfortable writing some of these policies. Let me just ask you kind of as a final question about the, the composition of where your power comes from. How clean is it? How clean is, does it need to be? And who's funding all the investments, the state, the federal government? So today we're about 45 percent carbon free, uh, about 35 percent plus of that is renewables. Uh, we are headed to 60 percent renewables by 2030 and 100 percent renewables or carbon free at the retail level by 2045. Who's funding that? Uh, for the most part, our customers, right, because these costs get uh, passed through rates. However, the federal government has been helping, and the IRA, I think, is going to be a, have a big impact in reducing costs for our customers. We, uh, all those tax credits get passed through uh, our rates to the customer bottom line, so that will help to uh, defer, uh, defray the costs of the clean energy transition. Yeah. Finally, comment on... You know, many of the utilities are struggling with kind of these proactive power cuts or power. I know you guys have had some shareholder suits. I think it is other other issues in the next two, three, five years. Are we going to be relying more on those pre preemptive kind of efforts? Um, just what's that strategy going to look like? What should consumers be prepared for in terms of the ask? I know my father in law lives, you know, just north of Los Angeles and experiences these rolling blackouts all the time. So actually, we're using those less and less and less. And if you take a look, just over the last few years, we share with our investors 
uh, the percentage of the risk reduction that's come from these public safety power shutoffs, and it's uh, well less than half what it used to be. It will continue to decrease. I'll be honest with you, Kelly, that's a tool we will want to retain in the toolbox for the most extreme conditions. But today, already, uh, the, the impact on our customers is a small fraction of what it was five years ago. Yeah.